Solutions Review presents the Insight Jam Expert Keynote. Thank you for having me. I'm Lu Zhang. I'm the founder and a managing partner of uh, Fusion Fund. We're a Silicon Valley-based uh, venture capital firm. Uh, has been focused on early stage investment in the past 10 years. And within the three vertical, we've been focusing on enterprise AI, healthcare, and industry automation. Healthcare has always been one of my biggest uh, passion. And also today, I would like to tell you more about the latest trend of uh, AI-enabled healthcare innovation. A little bit more background about myself. I was originally from a place called Inner Mongolian. We have very beautiful nature, very beautiful culture, but we just didn't have lots of the technology innovation. So in 2010, I came to United States, was doing my PhD research at Stanford University. And I elaborate and also uh, embedded with the local innovation ecosystem, I got a chance to start my own healthcare company the second year when I was 20 years old, 21 years old. And this company focused on type 2 diabetes diagnostic. And uh, I was more than 10 years ago, I was using machine learning already to provide more accurate diagnostic results. So I was a pretty early, not only just a researcher, but also an entrepreneur leveraging AI machine learning for healthcare innovation. A couple of years later, after I sold my company, I started to consider investment. So I did one year of angel investing, eventually got full IPO with my own portfolio and in 2015. That's when I started Fusion Fund. So looking back in the past 10 years, we already invest over almost 100 companies across the United States, grow from 20 million to over half a billion dollar size with a five fund and management, working with so many founders. I still remember back in the days in 2017, uh, we published the industry research report called AI in Healthcare. That was one of the first reports during JP Morgan Healthcare Conference Week, really talk about how important to really utilize AI for the healthcare industry in general. The now eight years later, we're really looking at a fast evolution of AI trend. And there's more clear than ever that not only just the algorithm matter, data really matters as well. Then we look at which industry have the most uh, huge amount of high quality data. It's healthcare industry. That's the reason this year we also published our AI healthcare 2.0 report. And also today I want to share with you more details and also updates of the technology innovation, challenge and opportunity within AI in healthcare. Go back to what I mentioned early on. AI not only just the when we talk about artificial intelligence, there's a typical three things, A, B, C. A is algorithm, B is big data, C is compute. We have tons of discussion about whether we have better algorithm, better model, have better benchmark data, and performing better. We also have tons of discussion about access to compute. But uh, in between the data, we have heard tons of discussion about we need to access to a lot of data, diverse data, but how about the quality of the data? After two years of the fast evolution of the generative AI, now more and more people realize the quality of the data matters more than the quantity of the data if you want to further fine tune the performance of AI. Then we look at with tons of consumer data, we basically are utilizing most of the consumer data within industry data, which industry have the best quality data and also most of the diverse data. We'll have to come in to talk about healthcare industry. Another thing is about the market opportunity. So market size in terms of healthcare sector, as many of you probably know, 20% of US GDP is within healthcare sector. And also if you look at broadly within human society, more than 30% of the data we're generating every single day are related to healthcare. But guess how much of this 30% of the data we utilize so far? Less than 5%. So it's a huge gap. It's also a big opportunity. That's the reason it's not only healthcare industry needed AI. AI also need healthcare industry to show the capability of AI, be able to further help AI technology to evolve to next stage. Then coming back to talking about opportunity and challenge within healthcare sector. Healthcare industry, I was saying that have this triple A problem, accessibility, affordable, accuracy issue. But this three triple A problem can potentially all be solved by artificial intelligence. We're always saying that, OK, before we talk about implement, implement AI, there are lots of challenges in healthcare sector of data access in general. And although we have huge amount of data, we have data isolation issue. 
the hospital in California is now sharing the data with the hospital from the East Coast out from Harvard. The main reason is really because the compliance requirement and also data privacy concern. However, in the past couple of years, we're seeing a variety of the technology solution potentially help us solve the data isolation issue. One example is feather computing. We have a company called Rhino. They've been focused on feather computing in the past couple of years, become the vertical number one, help over 60 healthcare system like hospital system be able to run federal computing platform on top of their data, eventually enable the data owner in the healthcare system to share, not share, like to work with third party without moving or transfer the data, which essentially means uh, no compliance concern for them. When we solve the data isolation issue, all this uh, healthcare service provider, no matter healthcare data owner, they'd be able to curate a high quality data library. That's kind of the step one for healthcare data to be ready. Step two is really what I mentioned earlier, out, data curation. You have tons of data. It's not only for healthcare sector, it's for all the traditional industry, but are they ready for AI training? How to curate, do the curation to make them ready to become a data library. So we also have company like OBFold. They can essentially handle structure and structure data, doing the data curation, and make the data ready to go for AI training. So all of this AI info solution, including other AI governance platform, data privacy solution, data encryption platform, this all enable the existing infrastructure within healthcare system, existing data format in within healthcare system, ready to move forward to AI implementation. So coming to AI implementation, I know there are lots of narrative talk about AI going to replace jobs, going to replace doctor and nurse. But in reality, we need to realize in United States, we have a crisis that we don't have enough physician and nurse. We don't have enough healthcare service provider. Essentially, it's not using AI to replace anyone. It's using AI to enable the existing workforce. How to make doctor, physician, nurse more efficient, more accurate in their deliveries. For example, we have a company on the workflow efficiency side. There's always AI application focused on medical coding, medical billing. If you realize how much time your physician are spending on medical billing, you will see that it's a waste of time. Why we want them to do that? But that's a critical piece for you to get a reimbursement. And AI can help them just finish the medical coding, let physician focus on talking to patient, solve your problem. And meanwhile, beyond that, there's lots of discussion about the medical imaging. There's always an uh, interesting application using AI to generate funny photo and funny video. But similar technology, you can use it for medical imaging. We have a company been in the market for long called Savo Medical. They're using AI to do medical image enhancement. What does it mean? Instead of taking one hour long high resolution scan, their technology will enable patient to only do a five minutes low resolution scan for a CT, MRI, PET scan then their Gen AI can upgrade the quality of the image to high resolution quality. Seven FDA approval to CE mark, Apple to Apple comparison, and uh, it's super accurate, ready to go. So just think about the result. For patient, it's better, faster, cheaper, and also lower radiation exposure. For hospital, for the healthcare system, essentially, we're seeing the capacity got improved and be able to further uh, supercharge the efficiency of the healthcare system. I'm just giving you some example of this AI-empowered workflow efficiency, the healthcare AI solution. It's happening within the industry. It's not just getting started. Lots of company and the solution I mentioned, they're making $20, $30 million of the revenue. I also serve on the board for the Common Spirit Health Foundation. As many of you probably heard about Common Spirit Health, they're the, one of the largest uh, nonprofit healthcare system in the United States. And if you look at them with uh, hundreds of hospitals, thousands of clinic under management, they're also thinking a lot about AI integration. So we're at the beginning point of AI going to supercharge the efficiency. And in the future, it's not that AI replaced the job. It's the doctor, physician who use AI will replace the one who didn't use it. And it will create a loss of the value for us and also help us save the cost that we're spending 20% of US GDP in the healthcare system. So talk a lot about workflow efficiency. The more exciting part about AI in healthcare is really for the clinical application. And we're looking at the top three challenge within the society right now, cancer, heart disease, and mental disease. Every single disease you can enable with AI for personalized diagnostic results, 
personalized treatment plan and also leverage surgical robotics to have more accurate and non-invasive or micro-invasive uh, treatment plan. This is all happening right now. And for this year long, you know, we actually been investing across the different type of company leveraging AI for vertical application for mental disease. I have a personal passion for mental disease, especially considered now is the aging population. For aging population, the major challenge we're facing is dementia, Parkinson. It's not only about just the, 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 the nature of the disease itself. Just think about the social pressure and also burden for every single family to uh, help manage and also support a family member have dep depression and the dementia and also uh, dementia and also Parkinson. And uh, for the treatment plan for this type of disease, we have to do personalization. In the past the 10, 20 years, we've been talking about the future of healthcare has to be personalized the diagnostic and the treatment plan. And we could not just rely on the standardized treatment plan. It's about the quality of the life, how we essentially further improve the quality of life but how to do it in a cost-efficient way. I mentioned about AAA issue within healthcare system. One is affordable. Yes, if you can pay a lot of money, you can have personalized treatment, but how to do it affordable? AI, using AI. AI is a such an effective way to collecting all the biomarker and do a comprehensive analysis, find the correlation, and use the correlation to give more clear guidance on Understanding the trick, uh, understanding what triggered the disease for a certain specific patient, and also identify the more personalized uh, progression projection for each patient. And based on that, we can do personalized diagnostic approach and then personalized uh, digital therapeutic solution. This year has been a major year for AI in healthcare, partially also because we're seeing lots of the new technology evolution for mental disease, uh, heart, uh, uh, cancer, heart disease in general. Using mental disease as an example, we recently invested in a technology company. What they're doing is essentially using microglia cell, potentially can reverse the progression of uh, Parkinson in the future, also have potential for dementia. Microglia cell is a relative new area, but how do we have more personalized approach to grow microglia cell for every individual? AI can do it. This is a relative new research. The Nature Science paper just published probably less than half a year ago. But if one, once we have the treatment plan like this, you also probably heard lots of other momentum going on with different type of the discovery to do treatment for dementia. Then we can also bundle with other biomarker data, be able to do more accurate early stage diagnostic. So very passionate about mental disease and it's continually evolving. Besides the aging population, another major mental disease that are really challenging the whole society is the depression. It's not only for aging population, it's actually for the younger generation. I look at a recent data, roughly 20% of the US population is in impacted by depression. And what is the solution right now for depression? It's take a pill. Take a pill doesn't necessarily really solve the problem. And if the patient stops taking the pill, the rebound might even worse. Uh, so we keep hearing the very sad story about people suicide because of depression. It's a really, really painful process. And now we're also seeing a new technology evolving, basically leverage the uh, advanced surgical robotics approach plus AI, be able to do personalized uh, treatment for depression to have more targeted neural interfere in order to have a, a therapeutic solution for depression, which is also came out this year. And the reason we can make it very cheap and also apply to a majority of the population is also because of AI. So this is all the momentum going on right now. And beyond that, it's not only just the software, also hardware, the surgical robots, it's not only just the Da Vinci robots, which is a larger scale robots. We're also looking at the potential, the smaller size robots, and even nano robots is coming to the discussion to help us solve the, no matter it's a mental disease, heart disease, our even the, Cancer. For example, recently we have an amazing company. It's also an article published from uh, Stanford University early this year. They essentially use a kind of similar concept as a nano robot. It's a folding robot. It's very small. It can go into go inside into the blood vessel, essentially to remove the black clot inside. So this is one example of how nano robots can uh, eventually help us. Uh, go beyond that, we're also talking about nanorobot-powered DNA engine. 
And also we're talking about uh, different type of nano robots to be able to rebuild a neuron transmission for the brain machine interface. This is all the technology are evolving right now and how to do the navigation, leveraging AI. So it's AI bundle with nano robots help us to solve the disease in a more micro-invasive approach, which can help us not to compromise our immune system, but be able to treat the disease and help us guarantee the quality of life. Beyond the typical healthcare clinical application, there's tons of discussion about longevity in the past two years. I think since early this year, uh, one new thing we talk about the longevity is we're not just seeing longevity as the uh, well-being topic. It's more about uh, how we really seriously taking aging as a disease and uh, consider potential therapeutic solution for aging. When we talk about longevity and aging, we can combine all the things I just mentioned together into a full system AI in healthcare solution. How we be able to use AI to track all the biomarker to do early diagnostic of all different type of disease, capture them super early out, and do the non-invasive or micro-invasive uh, treatment as our digital therapeutic solution at the earlier stage to minimize the, the damage to our human body. Essentially, the goal we want to achieve is not only we're going to live up to 100 years old, when we're not planning to live forever, but when we live up to 100 years old, we can have a strength of the physical body, clearance of the mental mind, and continue to be able to have a full autonomy of our life and also making different choices, no matter work, traveling, and also spend time with family. That's the future of the healthcare. That's also the promising future. Now we're seeing we have a, a possible path to achieve that goal, powered by AI, powered by the access to tons of data, powered by lots of the new technology innovation. There's more I can uh, really cover uh, within the AI in healthcare. We're doing a lot of the report uh, in general AI in healthcare, digital therapeutics, digital medicine, digital biology. Things are evolving much, much faster than people's expectation. I know lots of the buzz and also attention is on the AI model itself. But essentially, if we want to really look at how AI can make individual life be better, make our society be better, be more healthier, AI in healthcare is really the most passionate industry and sector we focus on. So here, not only want to share the industry trend with you, I also want to call for attention. I hope more high quality capital, high quality founder, industry leader can consider coming to AI in healthcare direction, drive the innovation, drive partnership, and all together we can help this technology trend further accelerating and help more people and help our society. Thank you very much for helping me and I look forward to uh, the rest of the conference and also the interesting panel. For video highlights, replays, and more, visit insightjam.com.